Alrighty, so we have all of this insulation. Um, this is one inch poly ISO insulation. It's got an R value of about um, six per inch. So we're gonna use that along with, um, these are a bunch of pieces that were already in the van. So we're gonna try to utilize as much of that and um, start going to town, putting it inside the van. For this build, I decided to use poly ISO insulation, which um, for those that don't know, poly ISO is the abbreviated term for poly ISO cyanurate, maybe. Um, I decided to go with this because it has one of the higher R value per inch. Um, the only thing really higher would be if I had gone with a spray foam over the whole thing. Um, but with the with the R6, it's better than um, XPS, which is you know the common foam pink foam board, which is the other stuff that I'm using here that I had left over from um, what was in the van when I bought it. Um, another reason to go with the Poly ISO is it's got the foil backing, so it also acts as a radiant heat barrier, um, which probably isn't as big of a deal because the, the sheet metal body of the van um, is already probably doing that, but it is something to take into consideration. Um, another pro to poly ISO over XPS is um, it doesn't off gas and in such a confined space, if, um, if you're concerned about asthma or something like that, you wouldn't want to have a, a styrofoam that off gases. Um, this XPS that I do have that I'm using is so old, I'm not really concerned about that. Um, and also another thing and over, over just um, polystyrene, in expanded polystyrene EPS, um, it doesn't make a mess when you cut it. Like it's pretty clean, it just flakes off. It doesn't, um, it doesn't cause like a bunch of little round uh, peanuts everywhere or, or whatever. Um, so yeah, this is this what I used in my last van, in my Ford van, and it worked out really well, so I decided to use it again for this. Another advantage is you can buy it um, at pretty much any any uh, home improvement store, lumber yard, or whatever. Um, I did have a little bit of a hard time trying to find it. Uh, I had to drive to the next town over to get it from their Home Depot, because the Home Depot and Lowe's in um, Gaylord, Michigan were sold out. Now this is at the end of November when I was doing this, so the demand for insulation is pretty high. Um, so what I'm doing here is just cutting it to fit between all of the ribs in the van, and I'm taking extra caution on the ceiling to make it fit really, really well. Um, I'm not actually, not even needing to glue or tape the panels onto the ceiling because they fit so well um, uh, just from the cut. Um, here my camera gets kind of shitty because I actually broke my GoPro and so I had to resort to using my Hero 2 because it was the only, uh, the, the next best option and as you can tell, the quality is not nearly as good. Um, so I apologize for that. Um, initially while I'm doing this, I'm just using um, battens and tape to hold them on the pieces onto the wall. Later I'll show you what I do to glue them in. Um, but for now I'm just doing this um, in the ceiling and in the floor where I would like to have the highest R value especially in the ceiling I don't want to sacrifice the height by having two layers of foam so I'm only putting one layer in the walls I have enough room that I'm actually going two layers thick so I'll have an R value of about um, 11 or 12 because I am using a lot of the XPS the pink foam in the walls so um, just trying to get, you know, the highest R value and the most coverage that I can with what I have. Once I get finished with all of this, I'm actually using spray foam to glue it in. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Alrighty, I got all of the insulation fitted. Um, everything's all done. I haven't put this section up in the front, but I do have the piece cut there for the roof. Um, so now the next step is I'm taking this great stuff, window and door. I went with the window and door because it's flexible and what I'll be doing with it is spraying it and gluing all these panels in. So like a lot of this stuff I have battens holding it right now just to keep it up there. 
um, but I'll be gluing it in with this and um, so that should be pretty interesting. This process is a little difficult by myself. Two people would definitely be recommended um, for gluing all this stuff in. And I'm not sure this is really even the best way to secure this stuff. I haven't really seen anybody else do this, but it's what I came up with. And I was a little concerned with, with rust, um, but I did do, if you saw my previous video, um, the wool wax, uh, rust prevention everywhere, and also this the great stuff spray foam is not supposed to be moisture trapping so it shouldn't trap too much moisture but if I don't get all these panels sealed in completely then there could be some moisture buildup between the panel and and the body um, which I'm definitely not going to be able to seal these completely so that's a little bit of a concern but I also don't want the styrofoam to rattle around and squeak and vibrate while I'm driving down the road. And I'm making this video now post-processing after everything's been done and I've been using the van and I'm happy to report that there are no squeaks coming from the insulation. So this did work. Once I finished securing all of the panels, or all of the pieces of it, insulation, I took um, big gap filler, expanding spray foam, and I sprayed that in anywhere that I could in the ribs, in the walls, um, just to fill it up and have a little extra R value in the walls and in the doors to to just minimize all any, any sort of heat transfer that I can. Um, the next step in that same thought process was taking Reflectix, which is foil back bubble wrap and foil tape and cutting the, the Reflectix into strips and covering up the the ribs at, that were still exposed. So any sheet metal that was exposed, any of the red sheet metal, I'm trying to cover up. And so what this does is minimizes the amount of conductive heat transfer um, through those ribs into the inside so when I was in here, I could feel, touch any of the metal, and it's cold. It's radiating cold hair. And you could even feel it um, creating little convective currents um, around the, the uh, walls. So, so basically, I'm just trying to minimize that. So none of the airspace in the van is touching any of the sheet metal and cause any heat transfer. Will the wood paneling that I ultimately put up on the walls do the same effect? Yes, but it's not as effective. Also, this Reflectix has an R value of about, uh, I think it's one and a half. I might be wrong on that. So that can will, will help assist with the, the heat transfer. Alrighty guys, so um, the walls are done. And now I'm moving on to the floor. So what I'm doing here is um, there's a stock like floor liner insulation stuff in here, which is just uh, um, I don't know some sort of dense fiber something or other. Anyways, I'm putting in some um, furring strips. So and this one's already in place. So this will be 
um, kind of the edge of the cabinets that'll be here um, coming off this wall and so what I've done is I've just cut this carpet bullshit out and then um, used some liquid nails construction adhesive to glue this strip down to the floor and so I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this side I've got some just a little spacer in here here's the board it'll go right like that and then there'll be um, more of this styrofoam insulation. We'll go from here to the wall and between this section um, and then over here on the wall. So yeah, that's the plan. And then the subfloor that was in here before, that was the floor, it's that sheet there, um, will get pulled out and put back in. Um, and then uh, ultimately flooring will go on top of that. Once we get the flooring back in, that concludes all of the insulation and also concludes this episode. Um, if you like the content that you're seeing, please like and subscribe and comment with, with any feedback. Um, kind of still new at this, trying to figure it out, so really appreciate all of the comments I've been getting and any feedback you can, uh, you can provide. Um, stay tuned for the next episode. Hopefully next week I can get that uploaded and it'll go through how I do all the wood paneling for the walls and the ceiling.